All right, here we are again, doing another one. I rearranged the microphone so I can look at my screen and narrate. So we'll see. Um, haven't done one of these in a while, and I'm in the middle of a book called Warbots. It's from 1988, and it's written by um, it's written by G. Harry Stein who has uh, passed away, and the story about this is pretty cool, that a, uh, a gentleman who was young when he read these books, it's like there's like 12 of them, uh, he liked these books so much, as he got older, he decided to buy the rights to them. He bought the rights from the estate, and uh, he's releasing these in print and on audiobooks, so I'm kind of helping bring this book back to life. Um, it's been a bit of a challenge for me, because it's kind of a militaristic novel, sci-fi, sci-fi but militaristic, very and very similar to Avatar, where they actually have to sit in these harnesses, and their brains go and power these robots. So I'm wondering if James Cameron read this book and got his idea for Avatar, and then stole that from Dances with Wolves. So could have happened. So I'm gonna try this. Um, <laughs> this scene, this scene's like a, it's like a boring dialogue scene, but I figured I would, I would uh, video myself doing this, and we'll, we'll go from there. So, uh, as always, if I have to stop and change things around or, or edit or edit or punch and roll, I will. But we'll see. Um, I don't know. I don't know why I do this. Punishment, I guess. Here we go. Chapter 8 O oh, Captain, my Captain, rise up and hear the bells. Someone was doing something nice to Kurt, and it felt good. Helen, you she-devil, he muttered sleepily. Sorry, Captain. Sergeant Devlin left before I got here. But you're pretty damned good even when you're asleep. <laughs> Uh, this scene, I don't know. So apparently, they have to, they, so they use their brains to power these robots, and in the story, uh, when they disconnect from the robots, uh, and they haven't said anything about the women, but the men, like, have to, like, basically schedule, like, a sex time to get, like, to, to kind of help decompress, I guess. And uh, so they have these people called biotechs, and they they help you know unlink when when they're done controlling the robots. And part of the role as the biotech is to uh, have sex with the the pilot. And uh, so, but here this guy is also having kind of an affair with another lieutenant um, as well. So <laughs> I don't know. And she was apparently was going at him when he's sleeping. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't write this, I'm just narrating it. All right? Don't judge me, I'm narrating this. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Focus, narration face. He realized that Lieutenant Alexis Morgan was whispering in his ear. The hell with it, he growled, and put his arm around her. The world will run without us. The world will run without us. I'm staying in the sack. Alexis didn't resist, but she did whisper. Colonel Hetrick wants you to interrogate the prisoners. I get mumbly mouth sometimes. But she did whisper. Colonel Hetrick wants you to interrogate the prisoners. They won't go anywhere, Kurt observed. Alexis Morgan didn't respond, but she suddenly became colder. Kurt, the Jehorkims killed another hostage last night. La 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 la. La 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 la. Kurt, the Jehorkims killed another hostage last night. God damn it. Why'd you have to remind me of that? Because the world goes on running without you. I find it strange you don't want to dally a bit. 
we've dallied already. You probably don't remember, but I'm dallied out. You've been in the sack for thirteen hours. The colonel's been leaving insistent messages for you to... Thirteen hours. The colonel's been leaving insistent messages for you on the comm console, but she's too much of a lady to come down here and roust you out. Kurt's stomach was growling. I'm hungry, he admitted. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. How tough is he? He's just waking up. How tough is he? I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I was growling. I'm hungry, he admitted. Does the captain desire me to procure rations for him? Does the captain desire me to procure... Procure? Procure? Does the captain desire me to procure rations for him? Alexis asked in semi-mocking tones. Nah. I'll be vertical shortly. Then we'll go get some chow. By your command. She rolled out of bed, threw on a robe, and told the comm console that Captain Carson had just awakened and would report to the McCain's... <coughs> Ran out of breath. <clears throat> Rolled out of bed. Rolled out of bed. Threw on a robe and told the comm console that Captain Carson had just awakened and would report to the McCain's sick bay to interrogate the prisoners in one hour. Mm. Let's try that. And and would and would report to the McCain's sick bay. Had just awakened, and would report to the McCain's sick bay to interrogate the prisoners in one hour. Mm. Still kind of mush mouthy. Just awakened. And would report to the McCain's sick bay to interrogate. Just awakened, and would report to the McCain's sick bay to interrogate the prisoners in one hour. You don't give me much time, Kurt told her as he donned a fresh. You don't give me much. You don't give me much time. Still kind of sarcastic and tired. In one hour, you don't give me much time. Kurt told her as he donned a fresh Class B field uniform. Class B field. Class B field. Time. Kurt told her as he donned a fresh Class B field uniform. We don't have much time, if you recall, Alexis told him, also dressing. They promised to kill a hostage every day, and were scheduled. Scheduled. And were scheduled to suffer. You'd think, you'd think, like, just reading would be easy. I, I get all caught up in here. Every day. And we're scheduled to shove off for Zahidan in about six hours. So, the Jehorkims are still killing hostages? Hostages? So, the Jehorkims are still killing hostages? Hostages. Does that sound right? Hostages. Hostages. Let's try that again. Still killing hostages. Hostages. He's kind of mad. Hostages. So, the Jehorkims are still killing hostages. So, the Jehorkims are still killing hostages. New videotapes show up every... New videotapes show up somewhere in the world every day, and always scheduled to make a prime time newscast. And always scheduled to make to make the prime time newscasts in the states. New videotapes show up somewhere in the world every day, and always scheduled to make the prime time newscasts in the states. <clears throat> the thought sickened Kurt, but it motivated him to get powered up. He could relax and enjoy himself once the hostages were safely out of Zahidan. He felt guilty to be living in. <clears throat> he felt guilty, guilty to be living in lounge, luxury. He felt guilty to be living in relative luxury aboard the McCain. Aboard. 
He felt guilty to be living in relative luxury aboard the McCain, while more than a hundred people were being held in dungeons in a place that was fifty centuries in the past. He recalled the sights and sounds of Zahidan. What an isolated, barren, primitive, impossible backwater. I say bagwater or backwater. Impossible backwater. Primitive, impossible backwater. 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 Now he had to interrogate two people from that place. He wondered if he could establish communications with them. Maybe he could try putting Mahmud and Hassan. Mahmud and Hassan. Communications with them. Maybe he could try putting Mahmud and Hassan in linkage and letting Georgie scan their minds. But Kurt didn't know what kind of. Sort of. But Kurt didn't know what sort of mental blocks the two might have. <clears throat> have, have. But Kurt didn't know what sort of mental blocks the two might have. And he was hesitant to do that because when a person wasn't trained in mind machine technique. Blah, 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 blah. There's like weird punctuation here. This book needs another edit. Which happens a lot. You'd think, you'd, you'd think. Uh, that, you know, something that was already written and gone through an editor, um, you know, maybe had an edit. So I don't know if this was like this and just, you know, it was not edited well when it originally originally was released. But you'd be surprised how many horribly edited books that I narrate. Books, that, you know, and, and read. Books that are, like, professionally published <laughs> with a publisher. Where were they? And he was hesitant to do that because when a person have, and he was hesitant to do that, have, and he was hesitant to do that, he might have, and he was hesitant to do that because when a person wasn't trained in mind machine linkage, mind machine linkage, comma, not period, and he was hesitant to do that. Because when a person wasn't trained in mind-machine linkage, the session could result in zero information or conflicting data. In addition, there was the possibility of driving the untrained person into insanity. My wife just slammed a door. God damn it. <laughs> Luckily, I can split there. Sandy, 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 Sandy. All right, here we go. I live in a house where people slam things. And even though I'm in here, the deep bass still somehow gets into this damn booth. Sanity. Still. It was something he might have to do as a last resort. Alexis, I want you to come with me to the interview. Even though they were off duty and formal discipline wasn't mandatory, he'd referred to a he'd referred to a duty matter. Even though they were off Excuse me, good lord. Even though they were off duty and formal discipline wasn't mandatory, he'd referred to a duty matter, and Lieutenant Alexis Morgan knew that such a request was equivalent to a direct order. However, since they were not under combat conditions, Army discipline allowed her to ask why, which she did. Because I want my... Scroll, 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 scroll. Because I want to strengthen the impression that we're not the sort of soldiers who'd march 
Hoove. Hoove. Because. 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 I want to strengthen the impression that we're not the sort of soldiers who've marched back and forth over their people from the time. From time immemorial. From time immemorial. What does that mean? Back and forth. Back and forth over their people from time imme immemorial. From time immemorial. Sort of soldiers who've marched back and forth over their people from time immemorial, Kurt explained. And I want you there because you're a woman. Well, thank you, but why? Aren't women second class citizens in the most of the earth? Why? Aren't women second class citizens in most of the Orthodox Islamic nations? Uh, most, in most of the Orthodox Islam, Islamic nations? Why? Aren't women second-class citizens in most of the Orthodox Islamic... Frickity frack, I can't talk. Aren't women second-class citizens in most of the Orthodox Islamic nations? See, I said, Isla I said Islamic weird. Ugh. But why? Aren't women second class citizens in most of the most I'm getting tripped up by the most of the Orthodox Islamic nations? Why? Aren't women second class citizens in most of the Orthodox Islamic nations? Muslim women may not enjoy a lot of male perks, but they've got their own privileges. After all, the Crusaders learned chivalry from the infidels. A lot of Mario perks, but they privileges. After all, the Crusaders learned chivalry from the infidels. Privileges. <laughs> After all, the Crusaders learned chivalry from the infidels. So I don't have to wear a veil for any. So. I don't have to wear a veil for the interrogation? Damned right you don't, Lieutenant. He got up and went to the door. We're now back on duty. Yes, Captain, Alexis Morgan said. Sorry, I didn't mean to be flippant or disrespectful. It's just that occasionally our demands for discipline, our uniformity in dress, and then... Our uniformity for dress... Our uniformity in dress and in the way we talk... Well, sometimes that gets repressive and tedious. Yeah, I agree. But it holds the army together, Kurt responded. Let's go see if Navy's food improved any. Let's go see if Navy food's improved any. All right, I'm <laughs> done for now. Here we go, that's Warbots. Sorry I didn't choose something a little more provocative. But uh, it's interesting. I'm, this was written in 1988. And kind of seeing the, you know, the military hoorah thing. And, you know, women's roles and men's roles in this. Um, it's pretty interesting. They try to keep them pretty um, on the same level. But then there is there is some kind of goofy interplay here and there. Um that I don't know. We'll see. It's fun, but it is fun kind of getting these books from the 80s and kind of reading and seeing certain things that probably wouldn't fly in like a modern novel, maybe. Um, we're going to see more of that with the Brain Eaters. I'll be doing 1980, 1985's The Brain Eaters next. And <laughs> there's some, it's definitely a product of the 80s. All right. Well, there we go. Um, another video of me reading done. Hopefully, you guys uh, dug it with my. Uh, unkempt look and everything so uh thanks for watching hope this was fun i'm no i'm no joe hempel that guy just like narrates
for minutes on end. And I just, and I just want to do that too, someday. <laughs> like, how many minutes was this actually, like, finished minutes? Uh, three, like what, like not even ten minutes finished? And <laughs> this is a 20 minute video? Ah, uh, all right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for uh, hanging out in the booth. I'll talk to all of you next time. If I find a spicier, not spicy, that's the wrong word. I'm not, if I find like a kind of a more action packed scene, I'll probably do one of those. But um, I'll be doing some throughout the Brain Eaters, too, because Brain Eaters is, Brain Eaters is fun. I can't wait to narrate that. All right. Peace out. Talk to you guys later.